Welcome to Tradespoon and Yellow Town. My name is Lachar Pell. I'm CEO and founder of both companies. And today we're going to have a live trading room open to trade stock and options using our technology. For those of you who are new, welcome. If this is your first live event, do me a favor, type in first inside of the Discord chat, right? Uh, stream chat or inside of the questions on GoToWebinar. Up. All right. Bill wants the market to go back up. All right. We'll talk about that. Fred, good morning. Sound is good. Good morning, George. John, good morning. All right. A lot of people. It's good. All right. Uh, so welcome back, everybody else. I really appreciate your time, the fact that you're here for an hour. That means a lot to me. Disclosure very, disclosures are very important. Please read them. Um, if you're new to trading stock or options, I encourage you to visit uh, the link on your screen, optionsperian.com, so you can understand the link, uh, risk associated with trading stock or options. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not registered with FINRA nor SEC. I'm showing you what I do in my own account, based on my own risk tolerance level for general education information purposes only. Please consult your financial advisor prior to making any trading decisions. All right, trading psychology is important, right? It's very important to look, uh, have a trading plan and keep a journal, right? So I encourage you to maintain a journal uh, and do it in writing, right? Document, uh, entry point document exit points and have uh, certain rules that you follow right the rules that i follow during live trading room uh, you know I trade liquid stocks i don't trade penny stocks right so liquid stocks that have option weekly options right and tight bidding ask spread right because they are harder to manipulate and uh, you can look at the positioning and technical analysis and um, that's something i follow right Number one is what is the maximum risk per position, right? I propose not to risk more than two and a half percent of your account. And then how many positions? You know, I propose not to have more than four positions, right? So those are the most important rules. Um, uh, so tight bidding as spread liquid, and then how much are you risking, right? And you do this, um, by calculating, usually I translate options contracts into how much equity I have, right? So if it's a hundred dollar stock and I buy one contract, calls or puts doesn't matter, then I know that you know hundred times a hundred is you know ten thousand dollars. So always the same amount in terms of equity. Otherwise, you don't have you you have a big risk of concentration in one or in, you know in one stock or another. So uh, trading plan is important and journal. And let's go over, I mean, that's the most important exercise, right? Number of position and position size. Uh, so in terms of position size, let's look at uh, aggressive power trade. So JP Morgan is on the list again, Coke, United Airlines, Wells Fargo. So it looks like banks uh, continue, want to continue to go higher, model continue to pick them up. Uh, spiders close at 495, model C's 494 by 500, right? 494 by 500 is your support and resistance levels. Uh, so let's look at 494 and 495. 494 is yesterday's low, and that's uh, this uptrend, so it makes sense, right? Going into the NVIDIA earnings, right, which is going to probably uh, determine the next move in the market, right? If it's a home run, the stock market is going to bounce off this trend line and let it test all time high, right? That's what um, Bill is looking for. Or if it's any type of disappointment, right? Then you can have stocks significantly higher, right? And um, I mean, it could, you know, it's hard to tell, right? AMAT had a very strong earnings, it did rally. Uh, PNW today, pre-market, um, it, it is down. So that's the uncertainty in the market, right? And uh, nobody really knows, right? On one hand, Nvidia should hit a home run. On the other, uh, on the other hand, if anything is negative, it could sell off, right? Like PNW today. There was nothing with the earnings they did on bottom and top line, but they guided below consensus, you know, Q1, Q2. Right, and the stock down 25%, right? Two standard deviation, probably three standard deviation. I haven't seen PNW down 20%, you know, probably for a very long time, right? You have to roll back multiple quarters, right? 
And same thing with the price of AMET. AMET was pre-market up, you know, 15%. I've never seen AMET being up 15% pre-market, right? So um, earnings are extremely volatile, and that's a reflection on the market, right? That uh, there is a lot of enthusiasm in the AI stocks, but ultimately, you know, the, this horizontal move higher right is that justified right is it justified and do the earnings support that and we'll we'll find out today after the close uh so okay so there are two scenarios right S uh, spiders will not hold the support right because nvidia earnings will guide down or at least will not make everybody happy right or majority of the people will not be happy so then the next level is uh, 490 right for today, if you're doing day trading, I would say 494, right? 490, we're trading 495. So yesterday's low is probably where you want to consider maybe exiting, right? So that's support number one. And then support number two is 490. Overhead resistance, I mean, we have to close the gap and then all time high. So I would say this is your resistance, you know, overhead resistance right so that's what the model sees 494 by 500 i agree short term uh you have 494 as your support probably 490 is where you might get let's look at spiders and then we'll look at the position <laughs> So in terms of support and resistance, you see, you don't see 490 yet, 494. Model doesn't see a lot of momentum below 494. It's kind of neutral, at least as of right now. So let's look at the positioning. Um, so this is neural networks, right? These are the models that we are optimizing, that uh, you know, studies, learns on price action, trains on patterns, right? And then makes a prediction, right? That's the neural network. Uh, now the positioning, how is everybody positioned going into these events right one is nvidia earnings and one is you know spider support resistance levels john thank you one sadara what's my gut feeling <laughs> you don't want to trade on gut feelings i, I mean i you know i'm I think market is overbought, right? These uh, elevator up, elevator down processes are uh, well studied, like gamma squeeze. Uh, so my gut feeling tells me that you know you want to hedge your portfolio, right? That's why actually I am you know still have QQQ put spread, right? And SH because I think uh, we're going through some kind of consolidation. Usually end of February, beginning of March, based on seasonality, is there. So that hasn't changed and but it doesn't really matter what i think or what my gut feeling is right it, the question is what is majority of the people think right who cares what Vlad thinks right what does majority of the people think and you can look at the options data and it can kind of tell you that uh, we have what today tomorrow and friday right today tomorrow and friday so 502 so the big you have a pretty large vanna positive vanna at spider so 502 model kind of agrees between now and Friday market is going to have a difficult time breaking through 1502 right between now and the Friday that's how people are positioning and in terms of put buying there are buying a lot of 490 puts right so 
basically, you know, any negative news and we will retest last week low, which is 490, and we should at least pause at that level, right? We should at least pause at that level. Let's see, we got still, that's good, okay. So, um, Uh, the positioning concurs. You have a 490, right? Your 490 is your support, and basically, model does is everybody's selling 502 calls, right? So majority of people doesn't matter what they think, but they're selling 502. They're buying 490. Basically, they're saying yes. If Nvidia earnings are great, we'll get 500 502. We'll probably rally one or two percent, one one and a half percent. Uh, on the downside, people are well positioned to at least attempt to hold the 490 level. So I agree with the market, right? If you go into March 15th, uh, biggest spike is still 502, right? So we have to get over 502 level. And then in terms of support, the, you know, it's still 490, right? So 490 is pretty well positioned right now. So uh, at least majority of people think that, you know, we will trade between 490 and 502 between now and at least this Friday and potentially till you know, March until it's, there's some kind of a positive catalyst. Uh, in terms of earnings, so let's see, we did the earnings. So we have Teladoc, uh, PNW down 26%, Teladoc down 20%, Caesar is turning positive. So uh, in terms of the trade, right? And seasonality, right? Before we get into, in terms of seasonality, All right, so I'm, I'm out on half of the travelers, right? That was the trade from yesterday. I was able to capture, I think, close to one and a half percent. Uh, so half of the TRV I'm out. That, uh, so insurance banks continue to rally. That's a sign of soft uh, lending, right? Or immaculate disinflation, right? That the yield curve will uh, invert, right? So it will steepen, right? Bullish, and that's the main beneficiary of insurance and uh, banks large banks, not regional banks, but large banks. So, okay, so t that trade is still kind of intact. So I'm out of half of TRV. And then I did put, uh, I sold call spread and bought a put, right? Kind of the same idea. I did this with Teladoc, if you were following my trades, and also that it was the PNW, I didn't do it because I thought there, even if it's negative, it's not, you know, it's a very well light stock. AI and it's not going to sell off 25%. Well, I guess I was wrong, but it's okay. So let's put an order to close, attempt to close the Caesar. All right, so the first, let's try to close the Caesar call spread. So I collected 16 cents and I spent five of that cents in case Caesar is going to have bad earnings like win or and it's going to sell off. It didn't. So, but it's still profitable trade, right? It's still profitable trade because I only spent portion. All right, so let's try to close that trade, put in order to close. It's a short term trading. I do want to get out of the trade. So 46 call trading. Let's try to close it at two cents. Try to close it two cents.
All right, so let's see. So right now it's trading at two cents, the uh, two five, two by five cents. So um, let's look at Caesar. So basically, retested the uh, November lows and kind of gaps up. And then uh, while we're waiting for Caesar to fill, let's see TRV, let's review TRV. So TRV continues, you know, strong, uh, you know, kind of strong earnings and continues to make new highs, right? Because the, you know, the cost of insurance went lower. They left, you know, Florida and, uh, you know, California and, uh, you know, so, and they, you know, double the insurance everywhere right? for cars, for houses. So insurance are definitely benefiting, you know, the theme is higher highs, higher lows. So that's TRV. Good morning, Faz, how are you? P and W down 25%, TL adapt down six down to 16. 837. Let's see, so the teledoc I did put 15 put. Now I need to try to close it. It's trading at 28 cents. Input and four. So I did 15, 14 put on Teledoc, right? And it's at 16. So it's a profitable trade. I can close it for 18 cents. All right, so let's see Caesar is slightly down. Let's see what's the trading at. It's about two by five. So it's two by five cents. Good morning, Faust. How are you? John getting crushed today's plane, but yeah, trader hook, right. I don't know about 4 a.m. trading, John. You'd have to ask me. I know they have pre-market session. I don't know when it starts. 4 a.m. seems well, I don't know, it depends on your time zone, but thanks. Six, yeah, six, I think six yeah, it does. All right, meanwhile, let's look at the, at the rest of the uh, market, right? So it looks like uh, China is up, home builders are, are up, energy is up, uh, gold is up. Um, so definitely pressure in the technology stocks, QQQ down 60 basis points. So let's talk about QQQ, right? Bob asks, is Bob there, whether I should close it or not? So I 
see. Sorry, I'm just looking at the teledoc. All right. So looks like Caesar regaining position. Let's see. So again, uh, so we're at the lows uh, from retesting basically such yesterday's session low, right? 424. Um, in terms of the support and resistance levels, let's look at neural net. So let's see what the model thinks. So model sees basically 423 by 432, right? So basically saying that so same as spiders, so neutral trend, uh, and it doesn't see a lot of momentum below 423. If you look at the position, let's see between now and Friday, how TQQ, how people position in TQQ. So I'm looking at the, you know, X axis is the strike and then open interest, right? And that basically based on volatility, you know, put skew or call skew, you can kind of figure out where there are a lot of support. So you can see, I mean, there's relatively large going uh, in the Friday, relatively large uh, support at 415. Uh, and maybe half of that support is at 420, right? Nothing really built between now and 420. So model, so in terms of positioning, obviously, we're at 423, so 420 is not that far, right? 420 is not that far. I mean, it's less than 1%. Uh, and then at 420, you do have position. It's not a big position, 3,000, 4,000, right? We saw, you know, 80, like in March, there is, uh, you know, 30,000 in March, you know, some of these spikes. So, but it's still pretty well positioned at, um, well, 420, 415. So, I mean, and that probably will depend on earnings, right? If NVIDIA earnings is going to be weak, then we'll be at 415, down percent, right? That's the next stop level, right? If we don't hold the, uh, but there's not much, you know, and then 420, we're kind of at that 420 level. So for that reason, I think since I don't know what the, it doesn't matter what my gut feeling tells me about NVIDIA earnings, I, you know, they could be surprised to the upside like they have so 430 420 straight as 450 460 i'm up i mean 450 it's about 90 70 so what 50 80 cents so it's it's more than 20 percent higher so i'm gonna close position two things was gonna happen right
So let me close QQQ. Okay, so I'm out of the 420, 430 put spread on QQQ. Let me send this for premium service. All right, what's going on with Caesar? Actually, a little bit. Caesar continues to rally. Now up 2%. So what, do, what strike do I have? 46. I mean, it's still $3 away. I mean, you can close it for six cents right now. Or just wait. It's 46. So in terms of QQQ, right? Uh, the reason I closed 430, 420 put spread because I still have hedges, right? So I have SH, right? I have SH if the market, if Nvidia doesn't have a good earnings. And I also have uh, QQQ for 10,400 put spread, right? Because if the 420 doesn't hold, right? If the 420 doesn't hold, we will be, Test, market will test 50 day moving average for 15. So, and I'm hedged, right? I'm hedged for 10 to 4, 400. So, in that case, I'm hedged, right? And I'm not overly hedged because I reduced my exposure. If Nvidia hits a home run and we're back to 436, right? Uh, after strong earnings, then I can make a decision, right? Depends on Nvidia earnings and how market reacts, you know, then I can, you know, maybe buy a put spread again. A lot of it has to depend on these AI stocks like ARM, right? We look ARM looks like elevator up, elevator down, right? That I mean you could you could have a double top, but that usually means that if I have to guess the top is set, like an arm holding, we're probably not gonna get above 160 anytime soon. Uh, and then SMCI is kind of the same thing, right? Uh, you know, it's probably not going to get above the, you know, the top is set, right? If I have to guess, maybe the best case scenario is double tap on really good NVIDIA earnings. Uh, so, you know, but if I'm wrong and it breaks out, right, then, okay, then maybe, you know, maybe I'm not going to buy the, you know, put spread. But that's kind of the thought process, right? You look at your overall portfolio delta. Right now, you probably want to be market neutral, right? You you still want to have at least one or two bearish positions, but one or two bullish positions. That's how I would position right now. Bob present, welcome. I'm glad you were able to make it. But, so Bob, Okay, one second, give me one second. Okay. 
Just give me a second. All right, <clears throat> so uh, so that's 410, 400 put, All right? So I still have that and I have a Sage. Uh, any questions on QQQ? XOP called doing well. All right, so Bob is uh, low on energy. Yeah, so it looks like XOP is shown rebound, trying to, so it reclaimed 200 day moving average. It reclaimed 50-day moving average, and uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, UNG gas went up, EQT went up, uh, crude oil, right? So crude oil, I mean, it's not breaking out. It's kind of facing a lot of overhead resistance. So for now, you know, crude oil is still facing overhead resistance, has but it's a, you know it's fighting for 200-day moving average. Still pretty bearish price pattern, right? But at least it looks like higher highs and it's like ascending triangle, and potentially you know, but it need, crude oil needs to break through 80. It does need to break through oil, but you know you have China basically driving this price action, and China is also broke out, right? So China broke out above 23 level, and that pushes commodities. Because I think they've banned short sale, they've banned selling in, in, in you know opening one hour, opening the closing bell. They're you know suspending hedge funds. You know they're trying to kind of you know prevent market from going lower. So China looks like continues to you know breaking out. So and that's a lot of people are bullish on China. You know that's fine. I mean you can this would be a good stop level, right? Twenty three is your stop level, and then potentially. Uh, but again, whether it's China or XOP, it's kind of the same thing. Right? The trade is very similar. <clears throat> All right. Um, in terms of yield, right? In terms of yield, yield is not going anywhere, right? It's It's been trading between 4.2 and 4.3 for the past, you know, week or so. Um, so, NVIDIA earnings probably not going to move the interest rates. I mean, you have uh, Fed, right? Atlanta Fed president speaking, Rafael Bostic. You have Richmond Fed president speak, Tom Barkin, Michelle Bauman, Bauman, and then you have FOMC meeting, right? You have FOMC, not meeting, but release of January meeting uh, minutes. It could be just, I don't think there's going to be new information, but since market is sensitive, right? Market is sensitive. It could be one of those uh, kind of reaction where, you know, just a reminder that maybe March is off the table. Now looks like May, May is off the table. I think last time I checked was, there's only 30% probability based on position in futures data. There's only 30% probability that rate cut will happen in May. So it means that it's not happening in the first six months, which most people thought it would happen. So that could just remind people to that, you know, again, potentially higher for longer and maybe, you know, can, you know, spark more volatility in, in spiders and QQQ.
to say for short term trade above these. Uh, all right, so uh, let's see. So QQQ, let's look at QQQ before we get into Visa and let's review the rest of the positions. Let me know if you guys have any questions on Discord. Um, and then I do have to check. Okay, so Caesar is four cents. You can close it for four cents, Caesar. Um, it looks like we made marginal low. So short term, we did touch 423, kind of, I mean, very marginal new low, if I would watch. So that basically opens the door for to 420, right, the gap. So the next thing the market is trying to close is the gap. marginal new low so and I agree with the position 420 is probably right you're not gonna have uh, this is just not enough for 420 is the next uh, kind of uh, uh, strike or level at which there is high open interest of put buying so I would if I have to guess we're not gonna break 420 by end of today right uh and then it looks like it actually is able to hold on to this level so 420 is kind of the worst case scenario today and then tomorrow it just all depends on nvidia earnings all right do i like visa here with a short stop 273 I mean, there is uh, again this is event driven uh trading right because uh what's it called uh discover financial and uh, capital one is trying to merge right uh, then, and then based on these news visa drop yesterday and mastercard drop right and I, I assume american express too let's look at the, some of these so i don't you know i like to trade based on positioning and based on artificial intelligence right uh, because i think that's the edge Event driven, you know, today they're merging, tomorrow they're not merging. Then, you know, politicians, Elizabeth Warren is getting involved that no, 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 this is anti American and unions are going to suffer. So it's going to be one of those things that it's going to be, the, it's not going to be driven by positioning or by technical analysis. It's going to be driven by, um, it's going to be driven by the news, right? By the news. So it's not my type of trading right I, I usually try to stay away because i understand I, i'm at, at the mercy of twitter and the news and i don't watch twitter and news so i'm going to be the last in line to react but you know 273 support if you're a day trader and you think that this level will hold sure yeah you can that there's i mean you can trade anything right you can trade anything and i do agree that 273 looks like a strong support I would still look at Visa since you're doing day trading and just see if how much put buying people are doing in 273. So March 23, March 1, let's do March 15. So mostly people are selling calls, right? So 282, so everybody's selling calls. You do have, I mean, not a lot of Venice. So it's not a huge open interest at the, 270 contract size, right? So that means if 270 breaks, you probably want to get out, right? So there is nothing till 270. So I 273 seems to me like a very there is no support at 270, uh, 273, right? So 273, you know, you may or may not. I would use the 270 stop. At least you have some kind of Vena, right? Some kind of put buy, not a lot. I mean, there most of the most people are selling calls. Uh, but there is some put buying at 270. So if I would use a stop level, I think 273 is too close. I would use 270, right? And it's probably going to be close to 50-day moving average. This way, you at least know that if, you know, if and you want to be down less than $100, right? On $10,000 account. So if it drops to 270, right? It's down 1.5%. I'm down $100, then you can make a decision, right? This, this, this position will hold, you know, what is NVIDIA do? 50-day moving average will hold. So I would do it like that, right? Day trading, 
Um, day trading, I mean, it's a weak pattern, right? Big gap, very weak rebound, retesting yesterday's low. You know, I would, you know, it's hard to trade, right? You're trading against the trend, right? You're trading against the trend, right? Big gap on the news, weak rebound, A, B, most likely you will have C. Right. I mean, granted, it's the same thing. NVIDIA is probably going to pull Visa as well, right? So if NVIDIA hits a home run, potentially Visa can close half of the losses. But for now, this look to me looks like a very weak chart, hourly chart, right? So for day trading, you know, my, my idea is I would do the opposite. I would short Visa and put a stop level at 276, right? Because we try to, you know, it's been, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, for the past seven hours, bulls are unable to push Visa above 276. So I like to try with the trend. So me personally, if I wanted to short this, I, you know, if I have a choice, I would basically sell 276 level, basically saying that we're not gonna, you know, if it goes above 276, I'm out because it's gonna probably try to close the gap. But it, you know, as long as it's below 276, bears are in control. So Bob, hopefully it helps. Oh yeah, the, the, yeah. So it is a driven, event driven, right? They're kind of moving in sympathy with the capital one, right? So news I would look like capital one will struggle to cash in MA rewards. Capital one discovered deal hinges on playing consumer champion. 35 billion is supposed to be, I think, one of the biggest, if not the biggest credit card, right? If the merger takes place. All right. Yes, Tradehawk is the platform I'm using on Tradier. So let me put that. Uh, um, so we do have marketing arrangements. Uh, I do encourage you to try it out. So Yellow Tunnel Hawk. Hawk. Please open account. If you do, use this affiliate link. Right. We do have marketing relationship. So and they just or text me or email me or let me know if you guys are actually opening an account because. You know, I think it's a great product. I'm spending a lot of mental energy trying to kind of use it. I think it is very useful. So I want to make sure that, you know, we build on this. And plus you're getting this $10 a month. If you're trading options, you're not going to spend more than $10 a month, which is a lot of savings. So yellow tunnel, uh, I put it. Uh, earnings. All right. Um, thank you, Bob. Tall Brothers, somebody said about Tall Brothers. Am I dreaming? Didn't I just show up? Okay, Tall Brothers, I think they did have earnings, right? Yeah, so Toll Brothers had a good earnings up 6%. Home builders continue to rally. All right, so it looks like spiders are able to hold on to yesterday's low. You know, they're actually turning flat. Uh, QQQ is, I mean, still probably weak rebound. Right? It's still kind of retesting the lows not that far away and, you know, another gap. So for now, it's still weak. All right, uh, Caesar. Let's see what's the Caesar. Let's just review the rest of the positions. Caesar is up one percent. Okay. Teladoc continues to. Do. So Teladoc was. So this was a good trade. Teladoc again. Uh, let's review that trade. We've kind of structured it yesterday. At the closing bell, so I encourage you to participate at closing bell. That's where we do. I mean, you have to look at the earnings and earnings consistency. It tells you kind of how the market is positioned and how it's reacting, right? PNW down 25%. If it was two months ago, same earnings or three months ago, same earnings, it would be up 20%. But you know, people you know are nervous, and you can see that. But Teladoc is the same thing, right? So you have basically negative uh, the red, right? February 23, people. Not a lot of Vanna, but uh, people are basically buying calls, 
not a huge amount. This is not like Nvidia, but you can see uh, people are buying um, 24 calls, right? That expires this Friday, and then they are selling 17 and a half and 18 puts to finance it. Somebody is had, was very well hedged at the 18 level, but outside of 18, there is no hedges, right? No hedges, it's kind of just open field. So that kind of shows you that if there is a negative surprise, negative earnings, right? And it breaks through 18, right? Teladoc breaks through 18, then it continues to deteriorate, continues to trade lower, right? And, you know, you could put, the, put that spread for 5 cents, 10 cents, close it for 30, 40 cents. I mean, granted, you know, you have to be right in direction and the magnitude, but at least the positioning shows you that nobody's hedged. Right, nobody's schedule, right? And it's kind of NVIDIA, I think it's the same thing. And just like PMW, right? And just like PMW, let's look at PM, let's review PMW too. PMW was a good example. Right, PNW, so red, right? I'm looking at the red color, right? That's this Friday expiration. And this is the next week and this is March. So um, mostly was selling calls, right? Mostly selling calls, well, I mean, selling calls. There was some put buying. There were actually some put buying at the 330 level, right? 330 and 340, 330 and 340. So then there is nothing all the way till uh, 270, right, 270. Uh, but so 330, if you look at the after hours chart, So it did it didn't so it stopped 330, right? People were positioning, so it stopped at 320, right after the earnings announcement, right? At 320, right? So it stopped at 320. Uh, where right where there was a, a position, right? February 23, that's the spike around 320, 330 level. So it paused, it paused here for a second. Uh, and then there was nothing, there's no other put buying, right? So then the earnings call started, right, at 4.30, right? At 4.30, earnings call started, Eastern time. And then anything that they said negative, it pushed the stock down, and then there was no defense, right? There's no put buying, and it just continues to deteriorate up until now, right? Another, you know, 10% drop from, you know, 3.20 to now 2.80. So positioning kind of exp helps you to determine, to determine, you know, uh, you know what's going to happen next, right? If, if there's a lot of put buying, you're not going to break through this level, or you're going to have a hard time breaking through this level. If there is no open interest at these strike price, and you have any negative news, well, then it's kind of just going to continue to deteriorate. So th th those were good examples and good trades, right? Teledoc and okay, Caesar, what's going on with Caesar? Why is it still five cents? <clears throat> Well, volatility is jumping, right? VIX, I would watch VIX, right? That's another, right? VIX is at 16, was at 16 level today. So definitely, you know, we're almost at all time high on spiders, but VIX is not at 13, VIX is at 16. So that shows you that people are nervous, right? People are nervous. All right, let's, it's 9.10. Let me review the rest of the positions. Any questions? Okay. So, um, oh. okay, so I'm almost out of Caesar, right? Where's the, how much is the put? Is the put was? Why am I not closing the put? Oh, it's worse less. Okay. Try to close for two cents the put. So I did buy long put. 
All right, so I still have Caesar call, 36 call, uh, 46 call. It's trading at five cents right now. It's trading at five cents, so I have to monitor it. Uh, EWJ, right, so Japan and NVO. So still long Japan. Japan for now, as long as they're holding the interest rate low and the economy is growing, uh, it uh, looks like it broke out of uh, it looks like it wants to, I mean, a bit break out of this overhead resistance, right? Like ascending triangle, uh, you know, consolidation for a few, maybe a month or so, and then break out, confirm breakout. So as long as it's above the strand, I think that's still a bullish, it has bullish momentum. And DO. So I was out last week, I started accumulating. So it's a little bit too far from the support, right? So, um, and you can see it continues to lose momentum. So again, you want to have a small position because I think it's still a good stock, but it's far from 50 day moving average and from this gap, right? So you could have a lot of momentum to the downside. So. You know, if it drops to 112, you, you want to be down no more than $100. You can move 10%, right? So, and I would look at the position too. Let's see how are people position NVO. Let's see where the hedge is. All right, March 15 and April 19. So most people are selling calls, right? We said 120, 125. That was a good signal to close that position. And now the next level of hedges is, is 117 and uh, you know 110. So basically 117, 110. That means if the market is going to be nervous, it's already at 117. It could uh, it could drop to 50-day moving average. So at 50-day moving average, if you still like the stock, you want to buy, right? But that means on a $10,000 account, you do not want to be down more than $250, because if I'm down $100 at 110. I probably want to buy more, right? but if I'm down $250, well, I probably have to get out. But not probably, I have to follow my rules. So that's NVO. We're talking about QQQ. I closed for 3420. I still have 410, 400. All right, SH. Still on this H. Uh, so if you're not comfortable buying QQQ put spread, I would consider buying SH. Right? Consider buying SH. Right, that's a hedge in case Nvidia is not going to hit a home run. Silver kind of has been volatile. A lot of it is a dollar trend. I mean, it did spike. Right, you had a pretty large move. It's tried to reclaim 200 day moving average and 50 day moving average. For now, it's kind of pulling back. Uh, but you do have that initial, at least it looks like it's building the bottom, right? And it's trying to break out. A lot of it, of it has to do with the dollar, dollar did pull back from 105 to 104. So it just depends on what the next level, what's the next move in the dollar. If I mean, it is overbought, it should pull back. That will benefit silver if that happens. So still bullish on silver, TLT, we talked about interest rates for now. We're just waiting for Fed speakers today and then probably inflation data in March. I did trim TRV, right? TRV continues to grow and higher. I trim TRV and I have uh, Verizon. Verizon, it's a March spread, so I have to be correct on timing. So far, the timing is off. Uh, but it's consolidating, right? It is consolidating. We've seen these consolidations before. So I think it's trying to regain this 50-day, I mean, it's about 50-day moving average, which is good. It's trying to regain this uptrend, which, you know, we'll see. So those are all the positions. Russell, Cherry Blossom, Mel Mark, welcome back. All 
All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Thank you for participating on Discord. All right. Garmin selling GPS gadget, nice earnings. Thank you, Bob. All right. So those are all of my positions for now. I mean, ARC is weak, right? BMW, TLDAC, that's not good earnings. So it looks like, you know, top, top, top. At least, at least high beta stocks, I would not chase them, but let it consolidate. But for now, it's kind of not going anywhere. Um, Spiders are pretty resilient, right? You have consumer staples, positive value, right? Supported by value stocks. Right? Technology is a little bit weak, but value stocks are continue to make new all-time highs and it that hasn't uh, broken down. IWM small caps. So small caps again making marginal lows, 197. Well, let's see, 50-day moving average probably has a lot of support that. 195, right? 195, 196. Let's look at IWM. <laughs> How's everybody positioned uh, into the weekend? So most Vanna is 190. 190. So there's a little bit at 195, 190, not a lot. March 15. Yeah, so it's mostly it's 190. Mostly it's 190. So, you know, 195, I mean, again, I think it's to do with NVIDIA, but the 50 day moving average might not hold, right? We might, it might drop to 190. So we'll see. And now it kind of, I mean, 50 day moving average has been good support for <coughs> small caps. All right, any other questions? See you tomorrow. All right, guys. Thank you very much for participating. I will see you. All right. Scott will do the closing bell today, and I will see you tomorrow morning. Thank you.